<laughs> kind of like people are coming into a conversation, you know, and just kind of sure. So, I'm down. So, yeah. I'm down. Great. All right. Well, welcome everybody back to the Insights Podcast presented by Vantage Pro. I am Duke. This is Van. And we have back with us special guest, Mike Sessler. Hello. So the band is back together. I like it. Back again. It, it yeah. feels right. It does. Reunited and it feels... No, we're done. Um, so, <laughs> so this is... We're going to go into part two. there would two. be no singing. Yeah. I know. I know. I was feeling good. There's a, there's, there's a pig on the smoker. It's a good day. So I feel good. <laughs> Um, so the, we're going into part two. Uh, we did part one, how to survive a building project without quitting your job. If you, uh, if you missed that, you should probably stop, click the link that's probably below us and, uh, above us somewhere, uh, <laughs> but click the link, go back and listen to part one, uh, and then, uh, come back and pick us up here with part two. But, uh, we talked a lot about, defining values for how you guys do ministry, as well as then really defining uh, not just what's cool technology, but what actually is going to get you where you want to go um, is as number one and two for uh, really just making sure that your project is successful and that at the end of it, uh, you don't want to leave with uh, your hair coming out screaming and wishing you had uh, worked at a grocery store and set. So uh, we're going to, we're going to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> from there um not one of the other thing wrong with working at a grocery store well not if you're running and screaming and pulling your hair at the same time though like yeah. you should that then, then it's not so great that's so, true yeah um but the next thing uh we often will tell people and and this is certainly near and dear to our hearts being integrators these days um bringing integrators in at the right time is really critical to the success of your project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I talk to people. Um, cause I'm a lot, I talk to, I'm, a, I'm one of the ones that it talks to people like right at the beginning of, of a project and they're like, well, they're, they're just about to pour the concrete. So we fear we should bring you guys in. <laughs> well, uh, probably should have done that a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yes, bring us in now, at least like right now, you know, do not pass go it's better it's, before it's, than after. <laughs> yeah. It's not before the concrete, at least make it before the drywall is taped. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, how many times we, we, uh, well, we did a project about last year where basically we abandoned, they had, we they ended up abandoning most of the conduit because the conduit was already in the slab and it was yeah. all in the wrong place and it was all we, the wrong We size. utilized as much as we could. We, yeah. we did, we did, yep. <laughs> but it caught, it ended up costing, it ended up costing the church a lot of money that just, mm -hmm. they just kind of threw away because they didn't bring the right person in, the right integrators yeah. in at the right time. And, and there was a lot of, um, misdesign it was, it was a, a lot of misalignment. A lot of things weren't thought out properly and they waited too long to, to talk to, to an integrator and a good integrator is going to tell you if it's the right time. So talk to them early and they're right. going to tell you if it's the right time. They're going to go, well, we don't, you know, we don't need to get in right now, but here's about where we should start, you know, talking about a design, you know, five years is too long. Um, <laughs> you know, when the, when the, um, when the cement trucks are arriving in your parking lot, that's too late. Not, yeah. You know, too late. That's, that's too yeah. late. Yeah. yeah, we uh we're actually starting uh kicking off our project with meetings next week where um they called us like two weeks ago saying, Hey, we've got concrete going down in in, in about six weeks. Um, what should we know? And I'm like, everything. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, you know, they're, they're, it's a, it's a small rural church and fantastic people. I, I, I loved getting to meet with them. Um, and they were all sweetheart people. But as I started asking questions and, and just even talking about some of the things that I was noticing, even in their, um, in their plans, um, they were like, Oh yeah, we should figure that out before the concrete goes down. Huh? I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, oftentimes what, what we'll tell people 
right? Is um, you really want to get the AVL people kind of when concepts are, are, are down the road a little bit, but definitely not before they're set in stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in architectural terms, it's often in the schematic design phase is a good time to, to bring your AV guys in, if not a little earlier. Um, <clears throat> you, you don't typically want to be too, too much farther down the design road than that because what can happen is um, – a lot of times there can be, you know, we, if you bring in a, a good integrator into your project, they can look at the drawings of the building and point out things that are going to be problems. And when mm -hmm. you're in schematic design, it's relatively easy to fix them because everything else hasn't been drawn yet. So, you know, things like, hey, um, you've got a backstage area here and you've got a really tall ceiling above your stage, but you have zero way to get a lift onto the stage to be able to go up and adjust <laughs> lights or hang things from the ceiling. So let's see if we can figure out how to make that happen. Um, and, and things like that, or even just, you know, gosh, did you realize your room is a, a perfect square and um, it's going to be highly reflective and it's going to cost a million dollars in treatment to make it sound good. So let's change some dimensions here. Maybe let's angle some walls. Let's put some sawtooths in and things like that that don't really cost a whole lot of money um, because it doesn't, the walls have to be built anyway. So what angle they're built kind of doesn't matter. Um, so doing things like that, we can point out uh, things that will save you a lot of money and a lot of headache down the road um, because one of the things that um, we've realized over the years, and this was really driven home to me for when I worked with an architecture firm for a while, is that architects are not production people. So they have never... What? Yeah, I know. Believe it or not, they have typically never, you know, pushed a bunch of road cases from the rental company onto the stage and opened them up and then had to figure out a place to put those rental, those uh, road cases while the production was going on. Um, so they'll design rooms that are, you know, traffic flows that may work fine for people walking around. But when you start trying to move set pieces or road cases or equipment or a lift on and off the stage, they just, they never occurs yeah. to them. So um, having somebody with that perspective to look over the drawings before everything gets set uh, will save you a lot of time and money. Yeah, it's huge. That's, um, you know, you talk about just traffic flows. That's a huge one. I mean, how many times are we talking to people with ramps where, you know, at the top of the ramp, it's a three foot by three foot or four foot by four foot opening. It's like, cool. How are you going to turn that corner with a or scissor right lift? Angle to the stage. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Or, or a big case. Or I had somebody uh, actually with a four foot by four foot lane and go, yeah, we're thinking it's going to be a little tight for the grand piano. And I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> a, little? a little tight yes yeah 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 four a four foot wide ramp is going to be tight for the piano you're not making the turn <laughs> yeah. right yeah but i think um one of the things i'm always most impressed with mike is um really how much acoustically um we can sort of resolve issues in rooms if the architecture is not completely set in stone yet yep yeah, that's a huge one. Um, again, doing simple things like doing sawtooth, sawtooth wall sidewalls, for example, to cut down on the standing waves that happen side to side. It's a huge thing to um, minimize the amount of treatment. And if they're actually angled in the right direction, um, then you can get nice bounce back from the congregation so the congregation can hear themselves singing but you don't get that weird bounce from the pa bouncing around inside the room and all that sort of thing and you know just doing some simple angles even on the back wall uh, doing some some large diamonds to break up flat reflective surfaces um, you can greatly minimize how much absorption you need to put in the room because and you know we need to have the room deadened a little bit but usually only because you've got stuff bouncing around where you don't want it to bounce around. So if we can diffuse it architecturally with the walls that have to be built anyway, then we don't run the risk of over deadening it to try to make it intelligible, which then sucks the life out of the room. Um, there's a particular church down in Southern California that we've all been to where you walk into it and it's kind of like walking into an echoic chamber because mm -hmm. they coat it. They basically built a cube with all hard reflective surfaces, went in there, did a service, and said, this is terrible. So then they 
coated the entire, you know, front, back, side, everything. They coated it all with absorptive material, and now it's completely dead, and um, the congregation won't sing because all you can hear is yourself, and uh, nobody likes that. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's well, the, and yeah, that's 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 the, the death blow is is not bringing people in and guessing what yeah. you know what it's going right. to be. I mean, we were well just at the at right time. Work. Yeah. Well, and I we're mean, like we're working with a church right now that they just they that they put a lot of acoustics in the room, but they put it in the room where it would be pretty and not where it needed to be for it to perform its job. Yep. And so now all of a sudden they've got this giant room that has a ton of acoustics in it, but none of it's in the right place. <laughs> right. Well, and I'm, I'm always amazed because, because oftentimes um, if we're in early enough, we can often save a lot of money even on getting the room dialed in acoustically. Cause like yeah. sometimes, you know, Mike, you mentioned sometimes it's too dead. Sometimes we'll come in and we'll do a quick model and it's like, Hey, you know, that, that acoustical ceiling tile you've got in there let's maybe use something different or let's use reflective tiles instead of, of absorptive ones because your room's actually too dead. Yeah. Um, or, you know, they'll have a drywall ceiling at 12 feet and we'll go, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can do something a little different so that it's not super awful. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just construction materials and it's, it hasn't been built yet. And so if we can, if we can tweak those things before it's ever built, Mike, as you often like to say, uh, right now it's just lines on paper. It doesn't cost anything. Right. Yep. When it's pixels, it's easy to change. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we did a, we did a design kickoff with a church that wanted to do, um, all like stone floors, a stone. It's not a stage because it's a very orthodox church, but their their platform was all going to be stone, very elaborate, you know, hardwood uh, on the upstage wall. Um, two uh, cry rooms on like House of Blues style side balconies that are going to be completely wrapped in glass. And then the entire back wall was going to be glass. And their number one priority from an audio standpoint was that they wanted everything to be extremely intelligible. Right. Yes. So we had to have some conversations <laughs> with yeah. the church and with the architect to say, Hey, so here's the thing. Um, this is going to be beautiful. However, uh, there is no way to do any kind of amplified sound in here and make it intelligible. It just will not work. Yeah. Um, we don't have, we do not have clear absorption that we can put on your glass wall to make it not bounce sound back in there. So, right. you know, we had some discussions with them and they're changing, th they're changing up the design because, you know, they recognize that people come to church to hear the word of God taught. And if you can't actually hear that, right. <laughs> then it's less of a good experience and people don't have to come back. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes when people are designing rooms, they, they want to defy the laws of physics in the room. Yeah. Yep. And you're like, well, this is just math. It just it is what it is. There's no, you can't, you can't make it, you know, you can't make glass not be reflective. Yeah. It's going right. to be reflective. And if you're going to put a big giant piece of glass up there, you're going to have problems. The laws yeah. of physics aren't suggestions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it, it is it is on a computer model sometimes. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we can we can bend the rules of physics a little bit. Can bend um, it, but you can't break it. We can't break it, and right. um, <clears throat> you know there are certain things we can do. We can choose uh, speakers, for example, that have very narrow coverage patterns, and that was what we were working on in that room was to do one that had a very, very narrow vertical coverage. And we were basically going to shoot about a 10-degree beam of sound at ear level right across the congregation um, to try to keep it off of the side walls and the back walls as much as possible. But, you know, if the side walls and back walls are glass, whatever hits that glass is going to bounce. So... Yeah, you've got to think about that stuff. And again, had had we not said anything, and they just went ahead and built the building, or if we hadn't even been involved, if you know the the building was all designed, permitted, and you know approved and ready to go, and then we show up and go, um, yeah, about all that, uh, right? Man, you're stuck at that point. It's it's really expensive to go back and redesign it. Well, and I and and one of the you know one of the pushbacks that. Uh, you tend to get is well we don't want to bring you in too early because then that's that's money we end up having to spend with yeah. with the av company 
up front when we do want to spend it, but we'll want, you know, we want to spend it a little later in the project. Mm -hmm. And I always say, yeah, but if you bring an AV company in early, they will potentially, as we've, we said, they were going to save you money Mm -hmm. on the whole project. So really you're saving money, even if you have to spend a little bit more up front in the whole, you know, in the whole totality of the thing, you're, you're actually going to save money. If you bring the AV integrator in later, you will end up spending more money. It will just, cost more. Yeah. You just, it, it's going to cost more money because, and it's not going to cost more money because you're going to be paying them more, although right. you may be, but you're going to be paying everybody more because now you're going to have to change stuff midstream and yeah. that, that always costs more money. Well, your yeah, design's, just- your designs are going to be done, and now all of a sudden your AV people are going to come in and go, yeah, your power estimates were wrong. Here's what we actually need for power. Here's what we need for structure and where we need it. Uh, here's where all of the conduit is that we're going to need. And so all of the work that everybody has done to get to completed drawings is now have to be, a lot of it has to be redone because they just, they worked off of guesses. And it turns out most architects Uh, as you said, Mike, aren't production people and neither are electrical engineers, neither are structural Mm -hmm. engineers. These guys, they just don't think about what we think about. And so if you're going to have the whole team as part of your architecture team, that includes your AV people. They've got to be part of that architecture team. And again, I I always maintain like once, once ideas are on paper and you're feeling good about them, like it's not done, it's not perfect. But like, we feel like this is the direction we're kind of going. That's a great time for us. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and just, you know, conduit alone um, can pay for the savings in conduit that an AV integrator can bring if they're brought in early, can pay for the entire AVL design. Um, right. You know, for it's, sure. it's running, running PVC conduit under the slab is relatively affordable. Running hard EMT up and over the building in the quantities that we often need it (laughs) is really expensive because instead of, you know, laying out some flexible PVC where you basically just glue it together and stub it up on the ends um, and you can kind of run it point to point and, you know, you can go right from the front of house right to the rack. You can go from the front of house to the stage, from the rack to the stage. And that's all like straight line, easy runs with a quarter, you know, a 90 degree turn up at the end really easy and inexpensive and efficient to run. However, if all that stuff has to be hard pipe up and over and around, and you, now you got to go around structure and anchor to beams, and it's all done on a lift, it's four or five, six times as long on the install. The material is more expensive. The hangers are more expensive. The wire pull is going to be more expensive. Um, everything is more expensive. So, just in conduit alone, um, if you're, you know, if it's going to be a heavy production facility, um, that savings will pay for the AVL design. So um, there's almost no no downside. There's never a downside to bringing your AVL team in early. Um, and house lights are another great example. Um, you know, we're working with the church right now, where we are replacing house lights, where. We try to tell them in the beginning, let us do your house lights because the ones that your EC is specifying, you are not going to be happy with. And they're like, no, it's going to be too expensive. We don't want to do it. And, and then by the time it was all said and done, what their EC, the, the value engineered version that their EC came up with was more expensive than what we were going to put in. They hate it because it does. they don't dim to zero. They dim to about what looks like about 30 or 40 percent and then cut off. <laughs> Um, and they flicker when they come on, and they're just not good. You can't, they don't control right. Well, we're redoing them now. <laughs> so it's yeah. now costing twice as much as if they had let us do it at the first point. So, um, you know, there are a lot of things where, you know, a lot of times pastors get nervous about bringing AVL in early because, oh, you just guys want to, you just want to spend money and buy cool toys. No, we're trying to save you money. We're trying to help you. And we, we pretty much can always do that if you bring us in early enough. Yeah. Well, just like you said, conduit um, and the acoustics alone, most of the time, those two things will pay for the amount you're going to pay for a good integrator to do your design. And you're going to save more. And structural too, because, you know, if you have, let's say you, you know, this, it's a large, it's a little bit larger venue, the structural for hanging led walls and a PA and things like that to the spec of what the church is anticipating. 
Um, mm-hmm. That can be an issue. I mean, we had a we have a church here in Southern California that was a big room, but it was basically a furniture store, and the ceilings were not designed to hold up all the <laughs> stuff that they wanted in yeah. there. And yeah. so, luckily, we were able to come in and 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 work with them and show them, hey, you know, this, here's place. This is how much all these this this, this stuff is going to weigh. And so the, then the architect was able to go, okay, well, if that's how much stuff is going to go away, then we're going to have to put bigger beams in. And they ended up, well, not just for the AV, but for many reasons, but they ended up putting giant I-beams in the room, but they didn't mm-hmm. have to retroactively re-engineer all that stuff yep. to put it in because it was all in the original design of, okay, so we're already doing this. What can we do to make incorporate that with the AV so that all this other stuff can hang in there too, and it's the building's not going to fall down. So, mm-hmm. and, and in that know. case, by working with the architect early enough, yeah. we were able to modify our designs to work with existing steel structure that was up there. Right. Um, so, right. You know, by us being able to come in and go, yeah, you know what, we could move this, we could move this hang point back three feet without affecting anything, and there's already steel there. So. Right. You know, that saves a lot of money and time and having to put additional steel in um, without affecting the overall outcome of it. So um, being able to work with the the architect, the structural engineer, the electrical contractors, uh, getting all that stuff sorted out ahead of time. Um, and, you know, when, when it's all working well, when you've got a good architect that can manage those conversations, we can often find ways that can really save a lot of money in doing things, A, in the right order, and B, in a very efficient manner. Um, right. And a good electrician will come up with ways to save money on how to do things. And, and everybody's working together to make that all happen. So, and in and, and, and coordination too. I mean, you know, we, we, if the HVAC company comes in there and starts hanging a whole bunch of ducts up in the ceiling right over where the stage is, well, that's <laughs> typically where the speakers need to go. And so, and the lights and, the, you and, know. The lights and everything else. And so if, if that hasn't been coordinated ahead of time, yeah. um, then now now you've, you're in a situation where either your PA is not going to be optimal, you're not going to get the coverage you want because the speakers have to either move into the auditorium or upstage, which is both are problematic, um, or the HVAC has to move, which is expensive. So um, all I those things. I can't tell you how, and, and for those of you who think, oh, that doesn't happen very much, <laughs> Everybody. that happens Everybody. all the time that happens almost yeah. on so many jobs I, I can't and big and small not just giant yeah. 3000 seat auditoriums but it happens on small uh i think it probably actually is worse in a small room because you have you have a oh, lot yeah. less real estate up there yeah. you know so but it happens in big rooms too man i've seen i've oh, seen yeah. five foot around uh <laughs> hvac ducks have to get moved <laughs> Yeah, because they didn't follow the drawings and they didn't there wasn't any coordination between them and things like that. Um, Yeah. So it's it's so closely related to this and and which is is our next point is making sure when you get into a building project, again, this is just the stuff that's going to save your job at the end of the project is actually going into it with a full, legit master plan and not Mm -hmm. just what you can afford to do today, because a lot of there's 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 two times when HVAC or the electrician are like, all this stuff happens. Number one is they brought the AV guys in too late. Or number two is when everybody went, yeah, but we're only going to be able to afford audio. So let's only think about the audio right now. And then you end up with things like HVAC or ceiling structure or whatever, where all of your lighting should have gone whenever Hmm. phase two comes around. Yep. And and yeah. that and if you don't have a plan that uh, that spills over onto uh, onto electrical as well. Yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. we didn't have enough electrical, so we have to yeah. now now they have to retrofit a, a sub panel in, or upgrade, right. their, or or yeah. upgrade their entire service. Yeah, the transformers got crazy expensive, and somebody was telling me that it's like uh, at this moment it's like fourteen months for a transformer right now. Yep. Like Something as like we yeah. speak in 2023, that's insane. Yeah. So you can't just go, oh, well, we'll just upgrade that later. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and having the master plan is so, so critical and putting it again, comes back to the infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> it's never going to be easier to run conduit and power up to where a lighting location is going to be than before the ceiling is finished. So, you know, getting that stuff put in place 
early um, and maybe even hanging the light bars up there because, you know, the, the light battens and, and that stuff is not terribly expensive. Um, and I always, I, tell, I will tell churches, if you need to value engineer things to get your budget down at kind of the last minute because everything else ran over and, you know, it's got to be cut out of the AV budget. Well, you know, you can cut back on the number of lights you hang for the opening of the building because, you know, you as a tech guy can, you can rent lifts if you don't have one or, you know, depending on the ceiling, you can put ladders up or scaffolding or whatever, and you can hang lights. And, you know, every month you can, you can probably find enough money in the budget to buy another light. And at the end Mm -hmm. of the year, you know, now you've got a pretty nice light rig if you have the Batten's power and DMX in place to do so. Um, If that stuff is forgotten about and um, the HVAC guy decided he was going to put a, you know, a duct right where the main front stage light bar should be. And now you're either going to have to be too close to the stage, which messes up your angles or go back behind it and drop it down below that giant duct. Um, You know, those things are, are suboptimal. So, uh, figure all that stuff out ahead of time and get it all on the drawings and in place and get that planning done so that when you're ready to roll into those additional fixtures and, and things like that, it's easy to do. Well, and honestly, and the this- planning, the planning, the f- having a full plan and having concept budgets on everything is actually incredibly helpful to sure. even if you don't do it all at one time, because mm-hmm. then, you know, especially with churches or any institution, private institution is that they need to raise the money. Well, sometimes it's going to take them three years to raise the money, but at least they have a target to yep. raise the money to. And if you don't have a master plan, you don't even know what that target is. Cause you have no idea how much stuff it's going to cost. Cause you don't know what you're putting in, even yeah. if it's in five, like- three years. And by the way, this is not just a new construction conversation. This is renovations as well. Oh, for sure. If you're like, we, we, we worked with a church, um, in, in Idaho who, um, and there's two parts to this story, but there in, in Idaho where, um, we did a full master plan. It was a simple renovation. There's, there's very little construction actually involved, but we did the master plan. And, and for two reasons, really one, there was some infrastructure changes that needed to happen. There was a, just a little bit of, of networking and, or a little bit of construction, a little bit of electrical. There's just a little bit to everything. And by having that all figured out up front, that stuff all got to be done at once as opposed to dribbling out even the electrical work. Um, but the second piece of that was really uh, just, and it's been fun to watch, um, a huge win for the church because they had a master plan their initial thought was it would probably happen in three phases over five, six years. Um, We are here about a year and a half later, and they've already done two phases, and they're talking about doing the third one uh, coming up here next year already. And that's been because, A, they had a plan that they could communicate very clearly to everybody. So everybody was like, okay, cool, what's next? And they went, well, glad you asked. We, We have a plan. Um, but more importantly, because we solved, uh, so many of their pain points, um, you know, made it, made it sound better. Awesome. Now our screens are really awful. We can't see them in the back of the room, blah, blah, blah. Cool. LED wall. Boom. Okay. What's next? Well, stage lighting and a little streaming video system, which had to happen after the lighting happened anyway. But everybody was so excited about the changes. The There was so much trust built up with the church now because it's like you had a plan, you executed it well, and holy cow, it worked. We love this. What's next? Um, so having that master plan also helps you move the ball down down the field because you know what's next. You know what it's going to cost. And when people, when you solve, it's, it's funny how churches work. When you solve people's pain, what was low-lying pain now moves up to the surface as high level pain and if you if you have a plan for it and a budget for it it's amazing what happens people get excited about it because it's like okay you you killed the last one let's go kill this one yep yeah and back to just back to the budgeting uh thing um if you're working with an architect on a either master plan for a campus or master plan for a you know building or whatever um they will put in a, a plug number for AVL. It's way low. Just, just well, it's know definitely that wrong. It's, it's definitely wrong. wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. Um, it's way low. Um, it will not be anywhere near close. And the, where that comes back to bite churches too is, again, if you don't get the AVL guys involved early enough, um, you know, 
I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen churches, you know, get ready to go out and build a $3 million building, and their architect put $100,000 in there for AVL. And then we show up, and they tell us everything they want to do, and we're like, oh, yeah, it's about a million, too, or, you know, 800000 or whatever the number is. Um, and scale, those numbers scale, too. So it could be a million and a half dollar billion building, and there's a $50,000 budget, but it actually needs to be four hundred. Um, you know, so it doesn't really matter what the real numbers are, but the architect is always low. And so if you're going out and raising money, doing a campaign, a giving campaign, a three-year giving campaign and borrowing money and all that, if you do not have accurate numbers of what AVL is going to be, um, you are going to be, um, disappointed (laughs) at the end. (laughs) um, Yeah. You will not get yeah. a system that delivers what you need it to deliver on, which is going to be really frustrating for the entire congregation because you went and, you know, you you, you built this beautiful building that is completely non-functional because there was not enough money provided for the AVL. Yeah, and that just goes back to, you know, the master planning also will include, like, where to put extra utility plugs and where to, you know. I mean, I famously, you know, these guys have heard this a lot, and if you listen to these podcasts, you've heard me say it before. I was at a church where uh, they used the auditorium for everything. It was a flat floor, and uh, there was no plugs on the front of the uh, front house booth, the sound booth. And so where did they put the, uh, all the, all the, uh, the coffee makers and the, the food warmers and everything, every time they had an event in there, right in front of the, and where did they have to do? We had, they had to throw extension cords into the sound booth and plug them all in there every single time. Cause there was, there wasn't one plug. Well, it's just little stuff like that, that a good integrator is going to help you with in a master plan from that all the way to the structure the infrastructure, yeah. the acoustics. I mean, all the things it's, it's the little things and the big things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and that leads us kind of to our last thing. And I think this is important. Um, whether you're a board run church, whether you're a lead pastor, uh, influenced and run church. Um, but ultimately is just really making sure you're being a good steward. Um, I think one of the challenges you can run into in a building project is you can get a little too dreamy about all the things you may want to do someday, or, I mean, a lot of the stuff we've already talked about, right? You, you may way overkill on the gear for what the church ever wants to do. Um, and so it's easy to kind of go overboard, um, when you're, especially when you're doing new construction and, and to think, uh, early go overboard, but, at the same time, I think one of the things that can also get you in trouble is thinking too small and, and um, not doing the right things. Um, I know one of the things I will always talk about with folks is um, being a really good steward is not about being cheap. It's about being effective, um, doing, doing the right thing the first time and equipping your ministry team, volunteers, staff, whoever they are, to produce the results that they are working so hard to produce. And so if you end up spending way too little or way too much and still don't achieve your results, then really you've been a bad steward. And that's either direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like to say you, you want to spend as little as possible on the, on the system so that you have more money left over to do ministry, but you also want to spend enough to do it the right way. Um, one of, right. the, one of the truisms in churches, uh, especially with AVL projects, this is true for a lot of things, but AVL is a big one, is that there's often not enough money to do it right the first time, but there's always money to do it again. And um, it, we've, we've done the math on this because we're all really math geniuses. And it turns out that paying for something twice is more expensive than paying for it once. Um, Shocking, right? It's yeah. weird. It's weird how that works, Um, but it's a truism. And, uh, you know, I I have been in churches that in less than 10 years replaced their PA three times because they didn't do it right the first two times. And really the third one was only reasonably effective. (laughs) It still wasn't that great. But, you know, they had spent collectively close to a million dollars on on a PA for a room that, you know, should have been a couple hundred thousand because they just kept doing it over and over again. And um, so you want to be sure um, that you're doing it right because, you know, the money that's coming in for this project is being given from your congregation. So, you know, people are out there not 
paying for things, you know, that maybe they need for their house, their kids, their, their, their lives. Um, they're taking money out of their budgets and they are putting it in the offering plate with the expectation that the church is going to use that money wisely to facilitate ministry and the advancement of the kingdom. Um, so, you know, before you start thinking that you, you've just got to have the coolest and latest and greatest, you know, digital audio console that nobody knows how to use but you, because it's, but it's just so cool. And that's what's on the cover of all the magazines and, you know, all the cool kids are running that console. Remember how it's getting paid for. Um, you know, it's being paid for out of the pockets of the people that show up at your church. And some of them can't afford to give what they give. Uh, there's no real good reason why they give what they give other than God takes what we have and multiplies it and, you know, does amazing things with it. Um, but there, there, there are things that you've got to think about when it comes to being a good steward. And it's, uh, it's a very high responsibility that we have. Well, and I'd say that on the, fl- that the, as well on the, on the flip side of doing it cheap <laughs> on the cheap and you're going to have to do it again. Right. That's- incredibly wasteful for the exact same reason that buying a bunch of gear that is ridiculously over the top is Mm -hmm. it's just it to me it's the same uh it's you know it's 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 the same mistake you know and and so we'll 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 just buy we'll buy a placeholder and we'll replace it later okay why because then you're buying the replace it later and the placeholder and now you're so now instead of buying something for a hundred dollars, you're buying something for $150. Mm-hmm. You're just, you're just spending it twice, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I, I mean, I, you know, we've all been places where they built the building and everything went to the lowest bidder and they got the cheapest, like, like you know, a uh, church I was at, uh, the main auditorium had, had three 10 ton air conditioners, right? HV, uh, uh, AC units on the, on the, on the roof. Well, they were the cheapest ones that they could get when they built the building. And within 10 years, those were all failing and mm-hmm. everybody's freaking out. They're like, well, I thought those were 30 year. I'm like, no good ones are 10 year units. And I mean, you know, you've gone way past and these things are not even good. They're not even efficient. And then, you know, then, they ended up having to replace all these air conditioners at literally hundreds of thousands of dollars mm. um, because they didn't plan out what they were going to do. They didn't have, they have had no plan to replace them and they didn't do it right the first time because they were just like, well, we just got to whatever, you know, and that that's terrible stewardship. Actually it's, that's not well, there, stewardship. There's times that a short term or disposable solution makes sense. Um, yeah, it, there are, there are times where it's like, I need a two year solution and I've only got X amount of budget and that's okay. I think where, what a lot of churches do run into is, um, you know, thinking that they can go buy, uh, uh I'm just going to throw it out there an X 32 and a couple of QSC K 12s and expect that to be a fantastic solution for the next 10 years. And it's like, right. eh, probably not. Now, yeah. you know, if that's what you got to do for now and in two years, you're going to put in the right system um, and, and that becomes your portable rig, then okay, great. Do it with intentionality. And, and again, sure. there's, there's, there's being a good steward there because you've thought that through, there's a plan, you're saving money for the right system. Um, and, and there's churches we work with, with that are like, man, we know what the plan is, but we've got to do something temporary for a while. Okay, fine. But it's, it, I think a lot of it's just being intentional, intentional with it. Um, really, if you're going to spend it once, can you spend the right amount to be effective immediately? Um, or if you have to step it in, um, and I think this, we run into this a lot, um, where it's like, well, yeah, we really want that audio system, but we need 80% of that. So can we find something that's 80% as good? And it's like, no, by 80% of the solution, like if it's, if you need a PA with front fills buy the PA and don't have the front fills, add the front fills when you're ready. Fine. Mm. Right, but the Good infrastructure enough. is already in there to add the yep. front wheels, and it's not as but bad. Don't, or, well, we do that with like wireless systems as well. Absolutely. Oh, we need we need we need twelve wireless mics. Okay, we can't afford twelve wireless mics. Great, build the racks for twelve wireless mics. Buy eight. 
Right. Mm-hmm. So don't 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 put in eighty percent of the quality for the solution you need. Put in eighty percent right. of the solution. Yeah. If, if that's what you got to do. Well, I had a guy call us. A, a guy called me and he said, "Well, we've got all these Sennheiser wirelesses, but we bought these these antenna distribution stuff off of Amazon. They they look just like the RF venue stuff. <laughs> they look just like it, but we're having all these problems. And I'm like, well, they're not." <laughs> RF yeah. venue. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't matter how good your Sennheisers are at this point, because if you're putting them through this stuff and this stuff's inferior, I don't care what anybody says it is. I mean, it mm-hmm. is inferior. That's not a good, that that's not good stewardship. That's not a good solution at the yeah. time, you know? And a lot of churches get to, um, where uh, what our, our pal Scott likes to call it Franken Church model, where you know everything is bought in crisis. So mm-hmm. you know the projector dies on Sunday morning, and so sometime that week somebody has to go out and find a projector. So you, what you get is what is available, and then something else right. dies, and so you buy that, and then it becomes this this hodgepodge of equipment that may or may not work together. Um, and it happens on move-ins too. You know, sometimes you have to, you know, you cut the budget and suddenly you're, you're buying stuff off of eBay and trying to cobble it all together. Well, if you have a master plan, as Duke said, you know, you don't, you don't downgrade what you're buying. You just buy less of it. So a master right. plan will ensure that every piece of equipment that you buy from that point forward gets you closer to the end state that you want to be. So instead of buying things three and four and five times to finally get the right thing, um, every time you buy something, whether it's a big item or a small item, it is another piece of that puzzle that gets you to that full master plan. And sometimes you just have to live without stuff. Like, yeah, would it be cool to have everybody on wireless in-ears that's on stage? Yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, but maybe you can't afford that right off the bat. And so you build the infrastructure, you leave the rack space, the, the audio outputs are available on the console, so you're ready to go when it's time to do that, when you have the money to do that. But maybe for a year or two, they have to work with cables and, and you know, wired, head, wired ears and things like that. Those are things that you can overcome um, as long as you've got the, the, the view, the right view of it, because, you know, buying, buying the cheapo, you know, $200 Galaxy in ear thinking that's going to be a good solution for you long term is just going to be disappointing. Um, so well, it's better just to buy some, you know, to buy the, the wired, right. you know, elite core box yeah. And, yeah. and plug it in and have it on somebody's belt. Just yeah. as a, just, I mean, because at least that's qu- that's quality for what it is, exactly. and then save up and buy the Sure, the Sennheiser packs or whatever at the end, yeah. you know, yeah, for and, sure. It, and here's here's the last piece of this. I mean, because you know this this whole series was how to survive a building project without quitting your job, right? Part of part of this and part of doing the right thing, even if you have to do it in phases, is your credibility is on the line. Um, your ability to serve your leadership is on the line. And if, if you put in makeshift solutions that are not going to get the job done, but you said it would for less, mm-hmm. that's all on you. And, and yeah. your credibility goes out the window. And if you're not ready to quit your job, you may be soon. Uh, <laughs> so most, most leaders will understand to an extent having to phase the right solution in in steps. Um, but if you, if you come in and go, well, I think I can do it cheaper with, with junk and it doesn't work, it's, it's your, your reputation on the line. Yep. Yeah. I'd rather have less stuff, but the right stuff than yeah. have a bunch of everything that's all wrong mm-hmm. yep. because then you're just going to be fixing stuff nonstop. Things are not going to meet expectations. And I, I think a lot of times, you know, people will say, well, it's just, you know, the tech guys are more picky than everybody else. But if you're doing it right, it's not that you're more picky. It's that you're looking out for the organization and you're saying, mm-hmm. you know, I, we want it to be here because it doesn't have to be here, but it has to be, you know, it has to be at a place where it does what it's supposed to do. It, it, you know, it, it does what you need it to do, you know? And I think that's that that that's and that's another thing of, of when do you replace gear when it doesn't 
um, serve its purpose anymore, right? When you have yeah, it's not when it's dead. dead. It's when it's not achieving its mission. Yeah, when it's not yeah. achieving its mission anymore. It's like it's not, you know, it's like having four three projectors, you know? Yeah. Right? And everybody's got a 16 by 9 uh, pro presenter, right? And everybody's yeah. like, well, okay, that's yeah. time to replace those projectors because, yeah. you know, it's it's not serving its function anymore. Um, and again, coming back to keeping your job at the end of the project, um, one of the things that we as integrators can do for you as a tech guy is to have the conversations with your leadership to say, you know, if you want to try to cut budget in this area and go with a lower cost solution, these are going to be the trade-offs that you're going to have mm-hmm. to live with. And we can be not really the bad guy necessarily, but we can be that third party uninvolved, you know, not really a stake in it other than, you know, trying to help you get the best solution. Um, But we can be the voice of experience to say, okay, if you want to cut back on that, these are what this is what you're going to give up. This is the long term cost of that. And these are the things that you are going to have to think about and live with if you choose to go that way. And if you want to go that way, it's your building. You can do what you want. We'll get you whatever you need. But, um, you know, you need to have somebody that sometimes can just be that that outside voice saying, Here's what you need to think about. And that way, you're not necessarily, as a tech guy, having to be the fall guy for either, you know, being the uh, the killer of dreams, as Van likes to say, or, um, you know, it doesn't come back on you. It doesn't blow back on you when it doesn't live up to the expectation um, because we've already told the pastor, hey, you can do this, but you're not going to be happy with it. And if they say, I want to do it anyway— Okay, cool. Then, and we've had this happen. <laughs> I've had pastors come up to me and go, man, I wish I'd listened to you. I'm not mm-hmm. happy with that. I'm like, no, I told you you wouldn't be. Nope. You're, I am. Nope. You're right. Okay. What's it well, going to cost? Going back to that house lighting project. I would say yeah. the prime example right there. That conversation has been had. We didn't, we didn't even have first service in there. And he came up to me and he said, I really wish I listened to you on that because these are terrible. And I said, yeah, they are. He said, you told me that. Yep, I did. Okay. Yeah. And then on the flip and on the flip side of that, good talk. Um, I'm thinking of a church that we, we basically, they basically told us they didn't want us to do their sound system, but we, uh, we told them after they told us how terrible their sound system was for 45 minutes, that yeah. maybe we should at least give them a, an option for a sound system. They went ahead and did it. And, the very first service, the pastor literally be, be, be lined right to me after worship and said, I'm really, really glad we put a new sound system in. Like, mm-hmm. thank you for, thank you for kind of holding my feet to the fire on what, what I was saying, because this experience was w- way better than I could have ever imagined. And I'm so glad we did it. So, yeah. you know, so a lot of times the integrator were, were a, you know, integrators are able to come in and, and, and have the hard conversations, like you said, Mike, and have a good the, integrator is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have the hard conversations and say, look, um, you know, <laughs> you cannot do that, but here's what's going to happen if you don't. And if you're okay with that, then cool. Great. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, I think one of the greatest compliments we've ever gotten has been, um, you know, you told me what we needed to hear, not what we wanted to hear. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, we, and yeah, we've we heard did. that from quite a few folks. We absolutely have. And, and that's, I love that compliment. That's one of my favorite compliments of from coming yeah. from any, any church leader is yeah. when they basically, they say, you know, I, you, you guys told us the truth at the risk that we would fire you. <laughs> Just the reality, this is what we do. You know, I, yeah. most, most pastors and even most tech guys, do a couple of projects in their career yep. over their entire career. They'll do a couple of projects. You know, we do dozens of projects a year and we've been doing that for a long time. And so we, you know, again, and it's like anything else. It's not that we're special or magical or anything like that. It's just that we have the experience of doing it. Um, you know, when you mix a service every single Sunday, you know what's going to happen when the pastor walks up on stage and doesn't turn his mic on. You know, like you have the experience to know what is going to happen. And so you can have the conversation with me. Look, would you just leave your pack on? I'll turn you on and off. Okay. Just 
just trust me on this, right? So because you have that experience. In the same way, we can look out to the end of a project and say, if you do this, this is going to be the result. And it's not because we're, you know, profits. It's because we've seen it happen a dozen times already. And right. we're trying to save you from making the same mistake others have made. Um, so well, I'll never, I'll never, you, Mike, you and I were sitting at seats conference many years ago when Whit George said, it is, it is ignorant to believe that you can do in your spare time what others have devoted their lives to. Yep. And uh, I've, I, I use that all the time because it's, it's totally the truth. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I mean, because, because we do so many projects, we have, a, we have a, we have a very different view on how, and we know how the project's going to go because we've been there at the beginning and the end. Yep. We might, yeah. uh, we might, we might have to do a spinoff podcast at some point and do a, a, a true white, white hire and integrator. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> we could probably keep going for a while, and we're yeah. well I've worked extensively on that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, a, a new sixteen-part series on. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. For sure. For sure. I, I know. I did at least like a five-part series on the blog years ago. So probably, yeah, yep. probably. Well, this has been good, Mike. It's been good to have you back on on the podcast. We'll we'll definitely have to do it again, uh, since this is the Insights Podcast by Vantage Pro. Uh, yeah. You'll you'll have to come back and join us again. Seeing as how I'm, I'm Vantage Pro. Yes. Uh, you, are, you are. You are a pro. So uh, thanks for listening in. Uh, real quick, make sure you like us, subscribe on YouTube, um, check out all the videos, all the stuff. We've got lots of good content both on our website, vantageproav.com, or here on the YouTube channel.